Three, let's go. Morning, everybody. For those who doesn't know me, my name is Johannes Erasmus. I'm the Traveling Biker 73. You can find me on the YouTube channel, Traveling Biker 73, or you can just Google me. Right, guys, today I want to do you something very nice to you guys. For the guys that have a learner's license of the motorcycle, you need to get a license in 24 months if you've got the learners on this stage. So yeah, I'm going to through the process to you of what do you need and what is the do's and what is the don'ts. My motorcycling riding test in South Africa. Firstly, overview of um, the practical test, ability, and what, what you need to do. The test consists of a pre-inspection, um, starting procedure, and a skill test. The test is measured um, of the motorcycle's <coughs> rider's competency to handle a motorcycle compliant with the traffic rules, road signs, and surf markings, and it uses the K53 um, system for you guys. So here, what does the K53 say? Obtaining, obtain and maintain safe uh, following distances behind vehicles um, ahead of you. Um, the recommended safety following times is three seconds. You don't know how to count it. It's very easy. It's 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. That must be your distance from the vehicle in front of us. All right. And if you've, you're driving, a, that's for a light motor vehicle and motorbikes. And six seconds for heavy duty motor vehicles like big trucks and stuff. The following distance between them and the following car must be. Does it happen? No, it doesn't. But the rules say, this is what you need to do. So apply with the rules. And the uh, conditions as rain, slippery weather, surfaces, poor visibility. Please make this this for you a little bit longer. So yeah, the K53, I'm going to go for a motorcycle. You have or don't have a car license. If you don't have a car license, you don't know what a K53 consists of. You can go through the K53 on how to change the lanes. Here it is set up for you. Changing lanes with restriction, what you need to do, you will see number one here is consisting of checking the mirrors, checking your right blind spot and signal to the right. And number two, then check the blind spot. Number five, number three is where you signal. Number three is steering to the left lane. If it is safe, guys. Remember, always look, and always look, always look. In number four, position the vehicle in the new lane. And number five, cancel your indicator. And that's most important. A lot of guys are running on with an indicator and you don't know where, I, where is this person going to. He cannot go to the, any right. Is he going off the road? Or what is he doing? Multiple lanes, same thing guys, check your mirrors, check your blind spot, go into the lane and do not cross one lane straight through to the other one, go into one lane, check it in, go into the other lane. Right, in lane ending, oh guys, how many times have you been in, on, in, a, in a car and you're standing on a lane, nobody wants, everybody wants to see who's the fastest fastest guy to the line and so that I can be in front of the other guy. Guys, it happens every single day. Please be patient on the road and please be a little bit, use a little bit of your brain and then see how you actually need to do this. So then we've got the stop in the traffic lights. We all know what it means. I'm going, not going through this in very much detail. You can go it on detail. I actually just wanted to get to the bikes, the motor, cycle section for us stopping if you want to park in there in, uh, alongside the road guys there's certain procedures you, you need to follow just follow it and then we will have less accidents on the road 
make yourself, check your blind spots, check your mirrors. Nobody do that anymore. Please, I'm begging you, do it and we will be safe on the road. Traffic control signals, if you see a guy standing with a, a flag on the road, respect the guy, he's doing a work. He must be safe. Guys, do not ride, ride through this guy. Respect the signals that he's giving you. Stop him before I left. Uh, guys, this little red thing that is actually standing there on the road, so S-T-O-P, it doesn't mean just ride. Okay, it actually means stop. Stop properly. Take your car out of gear. Just be safe on the road. Do not just move. Okay. On the intersection of the left hand, guys, yeah, obviously there's no stop signal. You can turn, but turn in your own lane. Do not turn in other guys' lane. Check your mirrors. Check there's no people coming from other sides. Guys, it is actually just to have visual 360 degrees visual of everybody that is on the road with you on the specific time, specific place. Do not when you go over there, when you turn, then just stand still and do not hover. You've got gear, use your gear, accelerate in a proper speed. I do not say spin your wheels and then fly through there. Proper speed, accelerate as normal and go through the system. Right, turning right, the same thing guys. Check, this is all that you need to do. Do it and you will not struggle with your test. Okay, same thing when you get to a robot, where there's a stop, oh, where, where there's a stop sign and you need to cross, look for people, do the right thing, cross with proper safety measures in place, turning right after stopping, when you start off, yes, do the same thing, go and be in your first gear, accelerate, use your gears, do not, going through where people have to be stopping, the same thing, observe, 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 blind spots are important, if you cannot see anything, there might be something, Rather, see something and open your eyes and see something that there isn't anything. Guys, safety is important for all of us. Intersections, stops, turns, three ways, four ways, stop, brake, decelerate, brake, stop, apply your parking brake, and then put your car into neutral and start the whole process over. Remember, the K53, you will not get over that Go with the system, do it properly, it is there to save lives. Okay, then I'm going to skip this. And control sections, guys, you know what to do here. Do not go far, do not go too fast. Check your mirrors every time, check your blind spots. Apply your parking brake when you stop. If you do not stop and it's only a yield sign, then you can ride off in the proper gear. Do not try to make a turn in your fifth or sixth gear. It's not going to work. It's going to work. It's not going to be a proper. You are making danger on the road. If your brakes doesn't work, do not ride your car. Again, observe 360 degrees. When you see a traffic light is flash flashing red, what does it mean? Okay, for most South Africans on this stage, it actually means just right over the robot. Do not stop. Do not worry about it. There's other people that can stop, guys. Come on. If you haven't done your test, then you haven't have your license, then you haven't done this. So just do the right thing that you need to do. All it means that basically, take it as a four-way street, take everybody in consideration, stop and carry on with the process. Intersection where there's a steady red light, guys, come on, stop, stop and stop. Traffic light green, you know what to do, observe, 
check your systems amber the same thing when it's a steady amber when your amber is just going on it's a steady amber you know you decelerate and you get to check your mirrors check where cars coming check oncoming traffic pedestrians motorcycles anybody that is coming from you just use it roundabouts okay guys we can we can make 300 minutes views of going around the roundabout nobody knows what's going on in the roundabout not the mini circle not the big circle nobody okay follow the procedure that's all it's saying follow the procedure and everybody will know it give everybody a time to go around when it's your time just go around the circle use your indicators it's important for you to use the indicators to go around the circle and then people can see where you want to go the same is we want to go everything applies for the same if you're going to the exit one exit two exit three use the indicator you're going to okay there's going on a mini circle guys we know a mini circle always pa pass to the left of the mini circle irrespective of whatever um, wherever you will be turning left or right continue straight guys it is so important to do this especially there's the mini circle you want to turn to the left then turn to the left if it is your turn and then reduce your speed break cross the traffic look for crossing traffic look for people that is going to be turning in front of you look for people that's walking across the street always observe check your blind spots again when you turn to them the next slide and you want to go across the mini circle again you don't need to stop if, you, if the, it is necessary for you to stop then stop observe check your blind spots check your mirrors have a 360 and just be careful decelerate do not try to go through a mini circle at 120 kilometers an hour pedestrians blocking guys how many of you guys that has your license actually look at stopping where there's pedestrians that want to cross and wait for them to cross now you know why because we all in a hurry to get where we want to go and the hell with the, the pedestrians they can wait you can call they can wait till you pass for them to cross is that the right way to do this no it isn't but we do it in any case so yeah guys observe check the pedestrians have a little bit of decency just to stop and give them a chance to walk across the street river crossings where it is guarded guys it's important do not presume there is not a train coming anything is coming do not presume where there is a guard follow the procedure and get when it is unguarded unguarded and it's train do not just ride please just make sure do your observations reduce the speed just wait five meters approximately five meters from the rail if you don't see then follow the procedure start and accelerate and go off all right guys overtaking a vehicle we can speak about overtaking a vehicle for ages and ages if it's not the right way to overtake a vehicle do not overtake the vehicle follow the procedures check your blind spots go with the system the same with on the right hazard left hazard please make sure that it's always that you're always safe go through this do not do not overtake anybody that you cannot overtake at the right place at the right moment so yeah guys <laughs> the worst thing what we are doing if somebody is overtaking us we don't want him to overtake my car is bigger than yours i will accelerate and i will put food and i will sleep because i don't want you to overtake me is that the right way to do it is it the right sequence that we need to follow no 
But why do we do it? We do it, we do it, we do it. Please, guys, do not accelerate when you are being taken over from the left side, the right side, any side, a car can pass you, then do not accelerate, try to be an A-hole. Okay, three ways entering, guys. We know, of course, there must be cars coming from the... If you're coming and there's cars coming past, just make sure that everything is safe, follow the procedure, observe, check the mirrors, accelerate to go in. If you cannot and you need to brake, then stop and select the appropriate gear, observe 360, move on, accelerate and proceed. When you're leaving a freeway, it's the same thing. Do not go from one lane right through, through the traffic, pass, I have missed my exit. And that's what we do. Okay, then wait, you cross the exit and then right into pieces, but you haven't followed the procedure. Guys, it's not a procedure to follow. Follow the procedure is there to make it safe for every single person. Okay. If you don't know where your exit is, get yourself a GPS. Make sure that you know in three kilometers you need to go for exit. In two kilometers you need to go for exit. And make yourself available to go to the left side to take the exit, follow the procedures, and make sure that you um, have enough speed, enough deceleration to go on an exit without turning your vehicle and going on. But again, this is for instruction purposes only that you need to know this. And you need to abide with the rules of the road. By passing the exit, make sure that you do not have the indicator on that you want to turn in the exit by just cutting. There will always be people, when you come from the side here, there will always be people that are trying to push over here to go to the exit. Please be aware of this people that is doing that. Okay, do not honk at them. Be patient. Okay, it's always for everybody out there. It is so ridiculous, frustrated if people do this to us, to you while you're riding and you are obeying the rules and everybody else is doing what they want to do on the rules. Rules of the road. So please, when you pass the exit, and cars are coming from the from the side, please either give them space or move to the other lane so they can come into the lane without causing accidents, without being an obstruction in the road and follow the procedure that we can all be on the same path. Right, moving on from this, this is what the, the test track layout look for motorcycles that is going to do the motor license. Alright, we've got the track layout because on a motorcycle you can't do your um, licensing and outside of the licensing department, you can only do it inside. So this is where the skills are going to be tested and this is how you're going to be tested for your motor vehicle um, license. Mm. I speak so much, my coffee is ice cold already, it's now called ice coffee. So you can see where the various stuff is. We will talk a lot, lot about A, B, and C, all W's, X, and where you must accelerate and all of that must happen. So your pre-inspection. Okay. Your pre-inspection is there for you to make sure that all the that you are know your bike and you know that all the parts is. Please do not go to the licensing department. Try to make your bike to go and do your uh, motor, motorcycle license without your motorcycle being roadworthy. It must have the number plate on, all the mirrors must work, all the, the your license disc must be on, your mirrors must work, lights must work, it, your exhaust must be there. You cannot have half a motorcycle to go to the testing ground and test your ability for motorcycle if your equipment, your motorcycle is not roadworthy. Roadworthy. So make sure that it is roadworthy for you to go over to your mic motor. 
Please make sure when you are doing your motorcycle, it's roadworthy and all the components is in working. By checking this, check under the motorcycle for any leaks or obstructions under your, under your motorcycle. Inspect roadworthiness of the motorcycle preferably from the top to the bottom and from the left to the right while moving in an anti-clockwise direction. Check all the glass and plastic fittings if they are clean, secure and undamaged. Make sure that your license disc is available. Inspect the wheels, tires, tire thread, damage inflation, the valve cap, oil leaks, grease. Check your brake disc, shock absorbers, mat cast, wear, damage and if it is secure. Guys, we're all not mechanics, we're all not people, but you can see if there's something wrong with it. Please note that if your bike is dirty, it's making a bad impression on you. A bad impression that you don't want the officer that is making your license is taking from you. Okay, please, various parts, the footrest, the exhaust, the fuel cups, with this under seat, mention this, it is there, it is available for inspection, inspect it. Check your chain and tension and lubrication. Why must you check that? You know, why must you check if your chain is, um, what's it mean? Um, the tension is right, which is lubricated. When you start your motorcycle and it's going to, wow, then your chain is not, it means that your bike is not roadworthy for the day of your testing. And you don't want to make a bad impression. Ensure that the fuel tank cup is closed. Mention motor batteries is not available your, under your seat or in your fuel cup or under the fuel cup. Make sure that you have just checked it. Then we're going to melt with a side stand. Okay, guys. Yeah, you know, stand on the left side of your motorcycle and then unlock the steering. If you're still in lock, then you can unlock it. All right, cross um, both hand grips and apply the front brake. Swing your right leg over the motorcycle and sit on the seat. Bring the motorcycle to a right, to a upright and straighten the front wheel. Return the stand to its secure position with your foot and balance the motorcycle. Apply the front brake to ensure the motorcycle does not roll back. Guys, it's always important to secure your motorcycle. Please do not make sure that your motorcycle, while you have it in your hands, have control over it. It doesn't go forward or backwards. That will, fail, that will make you fail your test. This mount with a side stand precisely. Do a 360 degree observation while seated. Apply the fan, fan back and extend the, the stand fully on a, a, a secure surface. That will make the stand not fall down or your motorbike. Allow the motorcycle to rest fully on the stand and turn the wheel to the left. Raise from the seat and swing your right hand over the motorcycle. Make sure that your motorcycle is standing before releasing the hand grips of the motorcycle again for it to prevent to move forward backwards. Lock the steering in case it does. With motor, most motorcycles with a, with a center stand, you can follow the same procedures and please just make sure that the bike doesn't roll forward or backwards. Okay, dismount the same. Okay, and then you've got your pre-inspection. All right, pre-inspection on your motorcycle whilst it's sitting on the motorcycle. Turn the ignition to an on position. Alright, check any warning lights on the gauges for malfunctioning. If there is perhaps a malfunctioning on your bike, you've got about 5 minutes to fix that and then the test must go on. Otherwise, it will be totally gone for the day and you must come back. Alright, so that's why it's important for you to have your motorcycle roadworthy before you're taking your test. Check all of this stuff before you leave home to go for your test. Um, turn all switches off the off position and turn the ignition key off. 
Uh, check the pressure of the brake clutch. Um, check the throttle operation. Check the operation of the kickstart lever if your bike do have one. Adjust the mirrors for maximum view vision. Starting procedure if you want to start with the bike, where are we going to? Turn the fuel cap or the valve on. In other words, make sure that your bike, if it has, has still have um, a choke, basically have it on and have it ready. Turn the ignition key to on position and check the operations of any warning lights and meters. In ensure that the gear is in neutral. Switch the engine fuel switch to run position. Operate. Uh, check operate the choke um, start the engine by pressing the start button or by kick starting whatever your bike has release the starter button kick starter as soon as the engine run cancel the choke operation right simple and it easy but so many people are making mistakes on this and so many people are not getting their license because they make silly mistakes okay stopping the engine again stopping the engine switch any accessories off if there's any accessories that you've got on the bike gps systems and etc please leave this stuff actually at home it will just damper your license and you have too much things to think about stop the engine by operating the kill switch turn the ignition off turn the fuel cup or the valve off and select it into first gear here you come on your speed management observe you move off accelerate change to a higher gear and do not touch any boundary lines the boundary lines as we say it is the boundary lines coming from here that you need need to write in between them do not touch them then let's see you must start braking and i want to see how far you can brake so, yeah, 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 it's basically to see if you can actually brake with a bike. Okay. Moving off and turning, guys, there's a lot of things that we need to do. So you need to select your first gear, remember your observations, remember move off, accelerate, take your check your blind spots, move off, take your second gear. When you're turning, signal that you're going to turn left. Check your left blind spot. Turn left at point W. That was out there where you have to turn left. Guys, again, there's a little marking there. Do not touch that marking. Do not touch that markings. Do not touch any of the markings on the road. You will lose points there. You cancel the indicator as long as, as soon as you have turned. Uh, signal if you need it to stop. When you get to X and you need to turn. You need to select your first gear, obtain your clutch control, go forward, use your blind spot, turn your signal, go through this, rise, ride back to point A. Boop. Again guys, go straight, turn to point A, where you need to start again. Again, blind spot's important, look after, look after all the traffic that is in the road, make sure that you've got 360 degree visual over changing lanes is going to be the same use your indicator guys use your blind spot make sure that you cancel your indicator that your signal as soon as you have what's name in incline start now this is a major thing for everybody that wanted to start with driving a car so you've got the same here with the bike incline start guys i'm not going through much of this detail so but clutch control is the most important thing with the bike is a little bit easier because the clutch control is not as flimsy as the cars and you won't be able to burn it out as fast as the car will but have it and please practice this do not go to fail your test on that moving off during the the maneuvers of all, all parts of the test um all the errors that you make will be notified and your points will be calculated and it will say maybe you pass but please do not fail 
Okay. Then is the standing speed adjustment. Okay. Observe 360 move off. Move off. Accelerate as fast as possible um, through the curve. Do not touch the curve boundary lines. Stop at the second starting point without touching the outer boundary line. Repeat the maneuver in the opposite direction. Emer emergency stop. Here observe 360 degree move off, accelerate and change into a higher gear. Do not touch boundaries guys. It is important do not touch your boundaries. And bring the motorcycle um, bring the motorcycle uh, to control stop in a short possible uh, distance. Maintain the balance and not move the motorcycle for them to take the measurements the instructor that is going to test you let's take the measurements so you can see how long it takes emergency swerve basically the same thing guys you will see we're talking about point D and then our conclusion our conclusion to all of this is last I want to say please obey all the rules of the road do not do not do what you want to do on the road. Respect all the people on the road. Do not drink and drive. Always be vigilant, helpful, and do not take unnecessary risks and safe and sanitize. Good luck with your test, and I hope you will find this very, very helpful. And like always, safe travels from the traveling biker and follow me and have an awesome day good luck with your license and from me goodbye